welcome to the second episode on agroforestry practices as done here in Quinta do Val do Lama. My name is Hugo Oliveira, I'm a landscape ecologist, regenerative designer and nature dweller from Orla Design and we'll be today focusing here on this landscape unit where we have a syntropic forest garden. A syntropic forest garden is a highly intensive agroforestry practice that aims to mimic forest ecosystems. So basically use a multi-story uh, strategy to occupy all the levels that are present in a natural forest but with productive species. The idea behind a syntropic forest garden is one of creating a polyculture of perennial multi-purpose plants that uh, in a way create a lot of diversity in a particular landscape and uh, aim for a diversity of yields that uh, can be harvested along the seasons. So as we mentioned before, it's a multi-layered agroforestry practice. So the different layers are the canopy, the subcanopy, the shrub, it's behind here with the goji berry, the herbaceous layer, the climbing layer, the ground covers, the root layer, the mycelium layer, and also some aquatic plants that we have there in the tank. At the canopy level, we have mainly poplar, pepper trees, and casuarina trees. And we are now incorporating alders as one uh, nitrogen fixing tree. On the subcanopy level, we do have mostly of all the fruit trees. So we have apple trees, peach trees, some plums. And now we are incorporating, because we had good success on subtropical trees, we are incorporating also guavas uh, and uh, custard apples. On the shrub level, we do have a lot of ground cherries, uh, aromatic plants such as lavender. We also have goji berries and other like perennial cabbages and the currants and other species that occupy the lower areas of the syntropic forest garden. On the herbaceous level, we have some cabbages, some sorrel, also some uh, celery and chards. Chards now going into seed, so we can just cut them and feed them into, into the soil. And also the comfrey as a, a fertilizer also for this system that will later showcase how to do a good fertilizer out of comfrey. As ground covers, we have sweet potato and comfrey as a leafy cover, New Zealand spinach and different types of mints. Support species are those species that uh, are sacrificial, so we use them either to break the soil or to create biomass or to give fertility to the ground. One of these cases here is the, the fig trees. We do keep some fig trees for fruiting, but we overplant fig trees here so that they break the soil. And what we keep on doing is we keep on uh, shopping the organic material that they produce as a way also to cover the soil and cover the ground. So the poplars also work as support species. So wherever we have uh, poplars coming up from the roots, we use them as biomass to put around the shrub layer. Here we have a goji berry as the shrub layer and uh, we keep on uh, uh, covering the soil around it so that this organic matter gets uh, established and decomposes around the root systems. Another plant that we are using as biomass builders and support species is the boldo. So the boldo, we plant it all along the irrigation canal and we are using it to create biomass also in the beds. So for the root layer, one of the examples we have here is the cana indica. Uh, it's an edible root. So basically we have it grown for biomass production. For the climbing layer, we have several examples. One of it is the grapevines. So we've put them climbing every pepper tree 
and the idea is that then they fruit and they keep on being pruned as we prune the pepper tree we also prune the, the grapevine. Another one is the cherry tomatoes. This is more an annual, but we cho chose a very hardy uh, variety that gives a lot of seeds. So the fruits fall down and then next year they will pop up here. This will be fruiting until November. One of the benefits of this system here is that we have access to water from the barragem of Bravura, like a big dam that uh, harvests rainwater. And then uh, we have access to this water uh, during the summer. So this system is an irrigated system that takes use of this water. So it's by flood irrigation. This system is watered once or twice a week. And the way it works is that we allow these ditches to fill and then we close the irrigation and we allow this water to sink in. And uh, because we have a slight slope, it sinks towards the trees. So the way we've designed this system is that we have several canals of water passing through the system. And the closer we are of a canal, the more water loving plants are present. The more we go far further from the canal, the more drought resistant species we have. We are in a particular microclimate of the farm that uh, allows, because it has a little bit of slope, it allows that the frost, when we have frost in this uh, region, that it passes and sits in lower areas, so we don't have a lot of frost sitting here. So that allows us to have species like the guavas that uh, fruit twice a year and uh, abundantly and because we have excess of water we can then feed more subtropical trees also and uh, uh, such as also the cana indica but also the bananas so we can have like a, a more subtropical condition uh, than in drier areas where we don't have access to water or in lower areas where we have frost pockets that sit. Another species that we incorporated, a subtropical species, is the macadamia and it will work as a canopy uh, tree for this system and so we are incorporating a couple of macadamias in areas that still could hold some uh, cover. One of the characteristics of the Syntropic Forest Garden is a high diversity of choice of perennial plants. Uh, one of the reasons is that uh, we have uh, a high diversity of ecosystem services being provided by them. So this system started as a syntropic agroforestry, uh, established during a workshop in uh, 2011 uh, with Ernst Scotch. And uh, during the years, different people have managed this area. These areas had also different uh, uses. And uh, nowadays, because we have the offices here and uh, it's kind of the front uh, face of the farm, it uh, called for a more leisured uh, space. So we are incorporating more forest garden aspects into it. So to give it the feel of a garden, giving it the feel of a, a more uh, leisured space. There's nothing new about forest gardening because in fact it's a technique, sustainable technique that was used by forest peoples in the tropics for thousands of years. And in fact, Jeff Lawton has already documented a 2000 year old forest garden in Morocco, which has been in continuous use for the whole of those 2000 years. Um, what changed for forest gardening was that Robert Hart saw the technique, uh, decided that it was something that he would like to 
work with and adapted it for the temperate climate. So once he'd done this, the permaculture movement looked at it and realized that actually they might well have a global solution that could be applied in many different situations. It's generally a domestic um, technique for home production, but uh, it's scalable and it can be used equally well in rural and urban settings, in tropical, temperate, and areas in between. So it has spread through the globe with permaculture as one of the core techniques of the permaculture movement. So we invited Marie Ruth to be with us today because she's an old friend of the project and she was here when the implementation of this landscape unit was uh, done during a workshop and she's going to tell the story of that moment. So first time I met uh, Ernest Gotch, it was in Brazil, in the south of Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. He was uh, accompanying an implementation and maintenance of a food forest there and it was very inspiring to meet him and I would say mainly because of his sense of connection with nature so with him you, you could feel how would it be uh, possible that uh, human beings are uh, in cooperation with nature. So in 2011, October 2011, we had a chance to have Ernest Gotch here in the farm uh, to plant a food forest in this area. There was nothing, it was mainly bare soil, maybe two or three fruit trees uh, but a lot of space to regenerate. The main objective in that time was food production in several layers. So the focus was to have diversity in vertical stacking and also horizontally. This kind of system could be also implemented in cities, either in neighborhoods or schools or public spaces. It would for sure promote uh, connection with the seasons and with the food we eat and uh, among human beings just to, to share a place to take care. So we're going to make some biofertilizer from comfrey, uh, consolde in, in Portuguese. And uh, basically, well, this is one of the best plants to have on a food forest or e even in your garden if you can. Uh, it's really, she really likes humid soil, but really drainage, drainage soil. Um, it's a it's a very useful plant because it's from biofertilizers to bioinsecticides. I don't know if it's, that's how it says, but you can, she's rich in magnesium, phosphorus, iron, calcium. And right now we are making some biofertilizer and we call it, well, in Portuguese, the name is Shurum. I'm not sure if it is in English too, but it's the recipe can, can be for a liter of water to 10, for a kilo of leaves to 10 liters of water. That's the, the more or less the recipe. And then depends how, how we're gonna use it. If it's, if it's soil, it's to, to um, pulverize it in the soil, it's always good to um, dilute it, 10% of this liquid in, then in water. Basically what we have over here, it's again, more or less one kilo of leaves, comfrey more are shredded the best, the more efficient and fast it will work the shurum, uh, to 10 liters of water. Uh, normally it takes around five days to get all of this process uh, going on. And basically it's just the water taking all of these nutrients and be rich organic fertilizer. And then you apply it on soil or leaves. If it is on the soil, is 10%, so 10% of this liquid in diluted in water. And if it is on the, on the leaves, if it is foliar, it will be always in half, like 5% of this liquid. Um, well, just, just a curiosity, it's also very nice to accelerate the process of compost. So a bunch of leaves in, in every layer or in the middle or when we do compost by layers it's always good to accelerate the process and give you a little, a little more rich end product since all of the nutrients that this plant has after five days uh, normally the process is it's done so then we can apply it and we already have here 
to, to apply it on our food forest. So I hope you enjoyed the second episode of this series on agroforestry practices as done here in Quinta do Valdolama. This is a seven year system that uh, occupies less than a quarter of an hectare of, of the land, uh, irrigated lands, and uh, most of you can access land of this uh, size and these types of system can provide year long a diversity of yields that you can be incorporated in your lifestyles. These are systems that can easily be implemented either in the urban context or in a rural context. In small farms or more extensive farms, uh, skills are easy to find. Uh, just engage with the people in your region that know about it. Come for a visit here at Quinta do Valdolama. Contact us for any question that you might have and uh, let's all together engage in regenerating the landscapes we are stewarding and counteracting the effects of uh, climate change that we are so prominent nowadays and collaboratively we can do the change we want to see in the world. If you like this video, share this video, leave your comments below and engage with us. Thank you.